Pathological diagnosis and accurate disease staging are critical in the clinical management of non-small cell lung cancer, as treatment options and disease prognosis are dependent on the stage of disease. About 50% of patients with lung cancer present with distant metastases, usually in the bones, brain, liver, or adrenal glands. For patients with metastatic lung cancer, a tissue sample should be taken from the safest, most accessible lesion for the purpose of confirming a diagnosis, subtyping the lung cancer, as well as molecular profiling to determine eligibility for a specific therapy. For patients whose CT scans reveal an absence of obvious metastatic disease, eligibility for treatment with curative intent depends on the disease status of the mediastinal and hyla lymph nodes. CT, PET-CT and mediastinoscopy are routinely used to indicate potential nodal involvement, but are inconsistent for accurately staging the mediastinum and hyla regions. A pathological assessment of mediastinal and hyla lymph nodes by sampling is a more accurate and robust approach for determining the presence of cancer. Flexible bronchoscopy has previously been used to sample suspicious lesions, but the endoscopic view is limited to the airways, making it difficult to accurately and safely biopsy peribronchial structures and intrathoracic lymph nodes. Endobronchial ultrasound, EBUS bronchoscopy, is a minimally invasive diagnostic tool that uses real-time ultrasound imaging to extend the endoscopist's view beyond the mucosal surface of the large airways. Simultaneous visualization of the ultrasonic and bronchoscopic views enable superior site selection for transbronchial sampling, improving sensitivity, and reducing biopsy sampling errors. EBUS-guided transbronchial needle aspiration allows adequate sampling of all intrathoracic lymph nodes adjacent to the bronchial tree, including 10R, 10L, 11R, and 11L, which are inaccessible by other more invasive techniques. EBUS is indicated when initial CT or PET-CT scans display enlarged or FDG avid mediastinal, and when hyla lymph nodes or mass lesions warrant pathological evaluation. When reviewing the CT or PET-CT scans, the operator must consider whether the purpose of EBUS is diagnostic, staging, or both. For a diagnostic EBUS, samples from the most convenient location are taken and maximized to allow testing of predictive biomarkers. For a staging EBUS procedure, lymph nodes are systematically examined by EBUS and all nodes greater than 5 mm in short axis are sampled. There should be at least three lymph nodes sampled. There are three manufacturers of EBUS bronchoscopes. Although there are subtle differences, they all have the same fundamental components. The flexible bronchoscope has an ultrasound processor integrated into the tip. Most EBUS bronchoscopes have an external diameter of 6.9 mm, which is larger than a standard flexible bronchoscope, so oral rather than nasal intubation is necessary. The bronchoscope has a working channel that can house a dedicated 19, 21 or 22 gauge needle. Appropriate needle selection will depend on the clinical situation. The 19 gauge needle may be more flexible than other needles and can provide better access to more challenging areas such as station 4L and hyla lymph nodes. The bronchoscope has specific features that improve visual clarity. A disposable balloon can be placed over the ultrasound transducer and may be filled with sterile water or saline to facilitate acoustic coupling between the airway mucosal surface and the probe. The needles have multiple small dimples on their shaft to enhance echogenicity and improve visualization on the screen. The EBUS procedure may be performed under conscious sedation, deep sedation with anaesthetic support or general anaesthesia, depending on the anticipated length of the procedure and local practices. Local anaesthetic is administered to minimize coughing and discomfort. Specific attention should be placed on ensuring adequate anaesthesia of the vocal cords and airways which can be introduced by spraying local anaesthetic down the working channel of the bronchoscope. Once the patient is comfortable, the bronchoscope is placed through the mouth and into the trachea. 
it can be performed facing the patient or standing behind the patient's head. Care is needed when intubating the trachea. Often, only the anterior apex of the vocal cords is visible as the scope enters the subglottic space. As the bronchoscope approaches the cords, remember that the tip of the eboscope lies below the forward view of the scope. Thus, when traversing the vocal cords, the scope must be flexed to allow the tip of it to pass over the arytenoids and into the upper trachea. Once the bronchoscope has entered the airways, the target lesion can be located. For a staging EBUS procedure, N3 lymph nodes, contralateral to the primary tumour, should be examined first, followed by N2 nodes and finally N1 nodes to prevent upstaging the disease. Once the EBUS scope is positioned at the approximate location of the target area, the scope is flexed to gain contact with the airway wall while being rotated from side to side to obtain the image of the target lymph node. Inflating the balloon on the tip of the bronchoscope with saline may be necessary to maintain good contact between the airway mucosal surface and the probe, optimizing image quality. The appearance of lymph nodes on ultrasound imaging may be an indicator of malignancy. Round shape, internal heterogeneity, distinct border, and loss of lymph node hilum are characteristics of cancerous lymph nodes. However, lymph nodes should still be sampled based on size as pathological evaluation is more accurate. To avoid unintentional puncture of vessels between the wall of the bronchi and the lesion, use the ultrasound scan to identify more echoic areas which are likely to be lymph nodes rather than blood vessels. Colour Doppler examination can be used to support the differentiation of tissue for vascular structures. If the site of the biopsy is highly vascularised, it is advisable to locate a more suitable area of the lymph node to sample. This will minimise bleeding, which can cause contamination of the sample and blockage of the needle. After confirming the site to be sampled, the TBNA needle, equipped with an internal stylet, is inserted through the working channel of the EBUS bronchoscope. The needle should remain within the sheath during passage through the working channel in order to prevent damaging the bronchoscope. A key part of the safety of this procedure is to ensure the sheath is outside the bronchoscope before samples are taken. Under real-time ultrasonic guidance, the needle is inserted through the airway wall and into the lesion. After the lymph node or tumour is punctured, move the stylet, which is present in the needle at the time of insertion, to clear tissue that may have collected while crossing the airway wall. Then, withdraw the stylet. Sample collection is performed by moving the needle within the target lesion, while suction is applied via a syringe attached to the proximal end of the needle. When taking a sample, the needle should be moved back and forth for 20 to 30 seconds, or 10 to 15 times. The amount of suction should be altered according to the type of lymph node. For example, Hard lymph nodes may provide limited samples, and increasing the amount of suction can help to improve diagnostic yield. Suction should be stopped before the needle is retracted into the sheath and locked. Then, the needle and sheath are removed. The number of needle aspirations per site can impact the yield, and can range from three to seven aspirations depending on the study but the first pass has the highest yield. The optimal number of passes to maximize diagnostic yield is at least four. Immediately after the sample acquisition, it can be helpful to move the bronchoscope distal under suction to prevent any blood that was released into the airways from traveling further into the bronchial tree. The samples obtained may be analyzed on site using rapid on-site evaluation, rose, and are also collected in formalin. For rose, Aspirated material is smeared onto glass slides, air-dried, and fixed in 95% alcohol. Dried smears can be evaluated by an on-site cytopathologist to confirm adequate lymph node sampling with respect to the presence of malignant cells, and in a substantial number of cases, a preliminary diagnosis can be made. EBUS can also provide worm-like cores of tissue that are submitted to the laboratory in formalin. The samples are spun down to provide a cell block and allow further processing like histological specimens. Samples obtained via EBUS should be suitable for establishing a tumor phenotype as well as allowing analysis of predictive biomarkers.
Thank you.